Chapter 53. Anne, please like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps my motivation to continue writing this story. Chapter 53. It was the blaring ring that startled Peter awake, his eyes jolted open to meet with a room of pale gray shrouded by the rays of the early morning sun. His eyelids felt heavy and almost crusty. It only just felt like he had closed them not even a minute ago, so why was he awake again? The ringing continued to blare from across the room and a weight that was propped on his chest made an audible groan. Peter's gaze drifted downward, his mind confused by the noise and the haze of his sleep deprivation, only to see a mass of red hair taking up his vision. The hue of her hair triggered a memory as it all abruptly came back to his sleep-addled brain and he was suddenly very much awake as his gaze bored wide-eyed down at her lovely form. Holy. Fuck. He could hardly believe it, but Peter just slept in the same bed as Mary Jane Watson. And not only that, but he held her all night was still holding her. Despite himself, he couldn't stop the dopey grin from growing on his lips as he thought over the unexpected turn of events last night. Everything, all of it, had felt so right. Natural. Like Mary Jane was meant to be tucked away in his arms, protected from the outside world. That their being together really was fate. Because in all of the right ways, their relationship just felt so seamless. Mary Jane groaned against him again as she turned her face inward, burrowing further into his warmth while hiding away, as though the action of cutting off her vision would somehow block out the noise as well. Subconsciously, Peter tightened his hold around her shoulders, pressing her against him as he ignored the continuous ringing in favor of the feeling of Mary Jane's curves. Damn, she felt so warm and soft. He was very much hyper aware of the fact that from their current position, he could feel her breasts squished up against his ribs through their clothing. If only he hadn't given Mary Jane such a thick sweatshirt to wear. Then maybe he could also feel the hard peaks of her nipples. One of his thin t-shirts instead would have done his fantasies justice, that was for certain. Another groan escaped her as the ringing cut off, only to immediately begin its blare once again. 2. Early she complained in a grumbled whimper, her eyes squeezed stubbornly shut as she burrowed her nose against his torso. This brought him back out of his stupor and away from thoughts of her glorious body. The concern that he had for her health and well-being won out over his fascination for her, as well as his own exhaustion. As delicately as he could manage, he scrambled out of bed, trying his best to not jostle her too much. Then standing on to staggered feet, nearly tripping over his own toes in an attempt to retrieve the ringing device that was stored across the room quickly. Sorry, Peter gasped out in exasperation at himself, despite not being the direct cause of the ringing. Following the noise, he stumbled in the direction of where he had propped all of his things on one of the lounge chairs after gaining entry to their hotel room last night. He winced as the ringing stopped again before beginning its shrill noise once more. So sorry, MJ, go back to sleep, all right? Peter paced up to his open suitcase, where he put his cell phone on top of all of its contents last night before his nighttime routine. He made an immediate grab for it and looked at the caller ID. It was an encrypted number, which meant that he knew exactly who it was that was calling. Sighing, Peter accepted the call and held it up to his ear as he hissed out a greeting in a quiet voice, very much aware of Mary Jane trying to get back to sleep. He turned his back to her, subconsciously thinking that the action would somehow help manage the noise level of his voice from reaching her ears. Hello? Not even a second passed before Fury's curt tone cut back at him. You're late. Frowning, Peter pulled back the iPhone in order to check the time before he cursed under his breath. Fury was right. He was late. He was supposed to meet with S.H.I.E.L.D. this morning about 30 minutes ago but with his concern for Mary Jane, he totally forgot to set an alarm last night. Peter sighed heavily and put the phone back up to his ear, already dreading the coming day before it had a chance to even begin. Sorry, sir. I'll be there soon. Where will we be meeting? Last Peter heard, S.H.I.E.L.D. hadn't yet found a new base of operations in Prague and was told to stand by on directions of where to meet. The coordinates were already sent to your suit, came Fury's terse response. It was clear just from his clipped manner of speaking that he was far past impatience when it came to Peter. He was talking to Peter as though he were dealing with a toddler. It grated on Peter's nerves a bit but he pushed the feeling aside, needing to be in control of his emotions lest he prove Fury right by the man's unspoken questioning of his maturity. Right, Peter breathed before he swallowed thickly, his hand came up to the back of his head, fingers threading though his hair as he tugged at the strands, again, I'm so sore. 
Peter cut himself off as the line went dead on the other end, Fury having hung up on him. With a sigh, Peter lowered the phone away from his ear and closed his eyes in exhaustion, which had nothing to do with his lack of a full night's sleep in however many weeks. What a terrible way to start things anew with Fury on the mission. It felt as though every time he thought he was finally taking a step forward with Nick Fury, something would happen that would set him backward several paces instead. Why couldn't the world just make one thing easy for Peter Parker in life? Why did everything have to be such a struggle? Even the simplest things felt like he had to push a large boulder up a steep hill. You're leaving? Came a small voice from over by the bed, effectively cutting through the veil that contained his morose thoughts. I snapping open, Peter bodily turned to see that Mary Jane was awake and sitting up in bed, staring at him with a level of anxiety that she was trying to hide. There was a part of his brain that liked and appreciated the picture that she currently painted, red hair in a wild state of tousled waves, due to sleep as well as the fact that he hadn't been able to keep his fingers from coiling through the soft threads last night they made out. Her lips were a rosy pink and still slightly swollen from the accosting kisses they had exchanged mere hours ago. If it weren't for the wide-eyed look of apprehension in her gaze, Peter would have been lost to how sexy and oh-so-tempting she looked after waking up from sleep. But it was clear to the other part of his brain, without any words of confirmation needed, that she was trying to contend with the fact that he needed to go, leaving her behind in the process. His heart tightened at the thought of causing her pain through his dreaded departure away from her side, however brief it may be. Still, as his gaze roamed her rumpled state, he was glad to see that there was no sign of the panic attacks that she had been enduring just the other night. It caused a bit of the tension that he felt in his own chest to relax measurably. It told him that with the passing of time, Mary Jane would begin to become more of her old self. Confident. Self-assured. Yeah. I, uh. Peter began staggeredly as his hand came up to nod at the back of his hair again while his other arm gestured about wildly, will you be all right with that? It took a moment of her staring at him, drinking in his presence greedily with her eyes, as though she was trying to memorize what he looked like in that moment, before Mary Jane closed her eyes. She took in a deep breath before she let it out slowly in an obvious display of attempting to steady herself. It was another moment before she opened her eyes. Yes. Peter softened at her bravery and took the measurable steps that separated them before he sat on the edge of the bed next to her. Leaning forward, he pressed a deliberate and firm kiss against her temple, taking a moment to bask in the scent of her hair, before he pulled back. She beamed at the gesture, looking at him as though he had hung the moon itself up in the sky. Peter swallowed against the tugging sensation in his gut that urged him to forget everything else and just crawl back into bed with her. It was difficult for him to convey into words how much he himself dreaded their separation, the feeling was far from being one-sided on Mary Jane's part. After spending a couple of weeks searching for her, trying his best from thinking that the worst had happened, he now found it difficult to let her out of his sight. Now, he was doing his utmost to ignore the temptation she currently presented. But damn. She way that she looked at him sometimes. How had he never noticed that she had feelings for him if she had ever given him that same expression in the past? Was he really that oblivious? Or was she an expert in reigning in her emotions? She did say that she was an actress at heart, but Peter never had the privilege of seeing her craft up on the stage. Peering down, Peter saw where her hand rested on the bed, supporting her propped up weight. His heart squeezed at the sight of the bandage secured around her delicate wrist, hating the reminder of how much she had been hurt. Reaching forward, Peter took her hand in his and squeezed softly. The contact with her skin felt like it gave him a low thrum of electricity. In response, she immediately turned her hand over within his so that she could grip his fingers back with a squeeze of her own. The action caused a contented smile to grace his lips as he finally looked up from their intertwined fingers and back up into her gorgeous green irises. Finally, he said, if it helps, I can leave my phone number for you to call if it gets to be too much. And when I get back, we can go shopping for some clothes and other things that you need. Mary Jane perked up a bit at this. Really? Was it the thought of going out into the city after being cooped up for so long that excited her? Or was it the promise of spending more time with him? Could he dare to hope that it was the latter? Peter nodded, his smile growing more genuine at her apparent enthusiasm. More than anything, he just wanted to see her happy, that he occasionally got to be the cause of her happiness was just an added bonus to his ego. And then tonight, we can order room service and eat out on the balcony. His free hand indicated to the French doors that lead out to the private area outside. 
He could just picture it in his mind's eye. How romantic tonight could be. He pictured lit candles under the moonlight, a soft breeze wafting at the wisps of Mary Jane's red hair. He would hold her hand across the table as they conversed over everything and anything. Because there were no secrets between them anymore. At least, there wouldn't be any more secrets once they had a chance to talk over everything. Regardless, when it came to Mary Jane Watson, Peter was now an open book. And maybe check out the hotel pool? Mary Jane asked, a hopeful lilt to her voice as her eyes sparkled. Peter grinned. Now that was an idea, wasn't it? They would have to go shopping for swimsuits, but he couldn't foresee that as being an issue. A stray thought suddenly struck him. Would she want to buy a bikini? He could only dare to hope. Such an image that would paint could star in his fantasies for quite a bit of time. But instead of the dirty trek his head, or more accurately, his cock, wanted to traverse, he forced himself to think with a practical mind. Of course. His voice came out tight and creeped into the realm of cracking. Flushing, Peter cleared his throat and tried again, walking around in a pool would be great therapy for your legs anyway. Perhaps they could even check out the hot tub if the hotel had one. Peter would gladly take up the duty of distracting Mary Jane as she straddled his lap in the sauna while they made out amongst the surrounding steam. He could only hope that the hotel's pool would be vacant of all other guests tonight, otherwise he may lose his nerve. Mary Jane seemed much more relaxed now that she had something to look forward to upon his return. In fact, the way that their plan seemed to form almost sounded like a date, an idea that would probably sustain him throughout his day with fury, which Peter anticipated would be most unpleasant. But if nothing else, the beaming smile that she shot his way made everything, all of his current trials through life, worth it. He would fight to hell and back for that smile. Reluctantly, Peter had to detach his hand from hers then. I gotta get ready to go. I'm already late. It was clear that she was fighting against the frown that wanted to appear on her face as she forced herself to maintain the smile on her lips. Still, her voice was tight and much too spirited as she replied, Of course, Tiger. Can't keep you from going out to save the world, now can I? Peter hesitated in his seat at the edge of the bed, trying to study her level of unease carefully. Was there going to be another panic attack on the horizon? But he didn't see any quickening of her breathing or any drastic signs of distress, though he did notice the tightening of the corners of her eyes as her smile grew weaker the longer that he looked at her. Finally, he sighed, Mary Jane. Don't worry about me. Tiger, Mary Jane interjected with the most sincere amount of earnestness in her voice that he's heard in quite a while. Her gaze was begging him to listen to her, willing him to understand that she was trying to be brave and that he should respect that. I'll be fine, I promise. In fact, I'll probably just sleep the hours away while you're gone, so I probably won't even be conscious enough to be able to miss you. Peter raised a brow at this, which Mary Jane ignored, which would mean that I get to wake up a second time seeing your handsome face by the time you return. She winked as an added effect to her words and Peter actually let out a soft chuckle at her antics, though he recognized the distraction for what it was. He couldn't help but notice that she used flirtation as a way to try and steer him away from certain subject matters. To much more light and pleasant ones. Which was fine for now, Peter could recognize that she wasn't quite ready to face her demons. But she couldn't run away from them forever. So long as I get to see those beautiful green eyes in return, then I call that an excellent plan. Peter said with a small smile just for her before he stood on his bare feet. Stepping over to his open suitcase, he grabbed onto the red and blue fabric of his spider suit just before making his way over to the open bathroom door. He paused just outside of it and flashed a look at MJ. Although, if you just so happen to have a dream about me while I'm gone, you wouldn't have to miss me at all, conscious or otherwise. A spark of a cocky grin on his part was shot in her direction and Mary Jane took one look at his face before throwing her head back with laughter as she held her stomach tight in her grasp. When did you learn to become full of yourself, Mr. Hotshot? Mary Jane asked with laughter and glee, her eyes sparking with that mischief that he loved. At this, Peter's rare bout of arrogance only grew with his smirk, and his voice came out light and teasing as he retorted, when a gorgeous redhead insisted that I was actually rather sexy. With a wink in her direction, Peter left her gaping at him as he took the opportunity to step into the bathroom, closing the door behind him. He heard a muffled retort of hey, get back here. 
Through the thickness of the ornate wood that separated them and Peter was about to open his mouth in order to provide another witty comment, but his gaze caught on his reflection in the mirror immediately and his voice died in his throat. His mouth dropped open as he recoiled at the image he saw. It was extremely apparent how bloodshot his eyes were, almost giving the appearance that the whites of his eyes were instead a pale yellow to pair with the angry lines of red. There were also dark circles underneath that accompanied them, and as if to offset the deep purple bruises, the tip of his nose was a bright red that made it appear as though he had a brutal cold. And lastly, for the cherry on top, the beginnings of what appeared to be stubble was growing in on his chin and cheeks, only it was growing in unevenly due to the lack of care that he normally took in shaving, the parts along the edge of his chin and jawline already had beard hairs that had grown past the layers of his skin, which Peter knew was prickly without even having to touch them, while the rest of it along his cheeks was just barely to the point of creating a shadow. His mood plummeted. All right. Not so very sexy right at that moment, after all. He looked positively wrecked in his exhaustion, like he had just abused a whole bottle full of Adderall and was now wired to the point it made his skin look clammy and pale. He couldn't quite pinpoint why his appearance affected him so much all of a sudden. It was as though seeing his reflection was slapping him with the reality that not everything was sunshine and roses, as much as he wished it to be. He sighed. Great. Just when he had gotten confident in being around Mary Jane, he just had to discover that he had spent all of this quality time with her looking like he was the one that had been left in a state of neglect for weeks on end rather than her. Even after being starved and abandoned for days tied to a chair, Mary Jane still looked beautiful enough for her to be accepted on a runway if she were physically able to walk it. Peter looked like he would be lucky to be accepted into a halfway house. Peter sighed again and ran a rough hand through his hair, causing its already rumbled state to stand on end. His appearance wouldn't be this hopeless forever, though, at least, he had to actively remind himself of this. All he had to do was get through the next two days and then he and Mary Jane would be free to sleep and relax before returning back to New York. Then they could both rebuild their strength and then perhaps Peter could look like something resembling a human being once again. Two more days. Two more days. That was all he had to get through. That is. If he and Mysterio managed to stop the fire elemental at all. An involuntary shudder went down his spine. Peter tried not to think on it. The mere thought of failure once again made Peter feel the urge to kneel over and dry heave. No. He may have failed before when it mattered most, but he refused to fuck it up this time. Not again. Just the idea of another person dying when he had the power to stop it made him taste thick bile at the back of his tongue. You couldn't save Mr. Stark. What if something happens again and you can't save Mr. Beck? Peter shuddered at the name that had involuntarily popped into his head and forced the intrusive thought from his brain. He couldn't think like that. Not a mere two days before the mission. He had to be focused in order to succeed. If not for himself, or even Mr. Beck or Fury, then for the entire world. It was sobering for him to remember that this mission wasn't some sort of trivial thing. There were actual stakes in this. If he fucked this up, then there was no coming back from it. With a start, he suddenly realized that perhaps he had been using Mary Jane as a distraction to, as a way to cope with the impending battle that was about to ensue in two days' time. He swallowed as he watched his reflection turn pale as he stared, wide-eyed. For just that moment, it was as though the picture-perfect illusion that he had manifested broke, that his world wasn't only made up of all things Mary Jane Watson. And with the shattering of that fantasy, for that single second, he recognized how truly terrified he was at the prospect of fighting the elemental. Of losing. Of letting someone die, someone that he cared about. Crouching down near the floor, Peter wrapped his arms tightly around his knees, effectively cutting off his vision of the disturbing and manic picture his reflection created. It was with concentrated effort that he forced himself to breathe in slowly through his nose and out through his mouth. You're Spider-Man, Peter whispered to himself, so soft that Mary Jane had no chance of hearing anything from her place in the other room, you're a hero. You can do this, Spider-Man. You can do this. Mr. Stark believed in you, didn't he? But then again. There was so much that Mr. Stark wanted to leave Peter out of because he thought that he hadn't been ready, the last example of this was when Peter snuck onto Thanos' spaceship that took them to Titan. There was no doubt in Peter's mind that if Mr. Stark was alive, and had the ability to turn back time to that exact moment, he would have found a way to stop Peter from becoming a stowaway on that ship. Because when it came down to world-level threats, Peter just couldn't cut it. He wasn't good enough. Not strong enough. 
but now he was expected to become some cheap replacement for Iron Man? To try and save the entire planet from getting engulfed in flames? With that sort of pressure, how could he not fail? Hell, just from the looks of his erratic appearance, Peter looked like he could barely handle a simple mugging, how in the world was he meant to succeed in fighting a giant being made of fire? Mr. Beck said that he needs you, Peter whispered further, he wouldn't just say that for nothing. He's found a purpose for you in this mission. He grasped onto this notion as though it were a lifeline pulling him to safety from rough waters, and the air rasping through his lungs suddenly flowed easier. Rational thoughts enveloped him like a soothing balm to a nasty burn. Mr. Beck would ensure that everything was taken care of in the fight against the elemental. He's fought them before and has lived to tell the tale. So what was there for Peter to worry about? Why did he even have it in his head that he was responsible for how this fight would go when he wasn't even the leader of this mission? Sure, it may appear that Fury was calling all of the shots, but it was clear to Peter and everyone else within S.H.I.E.L.D. who was really in charge of what would happen in two days' time. Because Mr. Beck was a born leader, with a natural presence that commanded the attention and respect of the entire room without him even having to utter a single word. And Peter would gladly follow his lead down to the wire if it meant that the world would somehow come out on the other end of this. Calming down, Peter held a hand up to his heart as he felt its racing pace slow. Until then, Peter could do his part. He would try and take tasks one at a time, deliberate and slow so that he wouldn't fuck things up like he normally did. And that started with the small things. Lifting his head, Peter spotted his toiletry bag sitting on the bathroom countertop, placed there from when he used it last night. Standing onto shaky legs, he reached into the small bag and pulled out his razor. This was something simple that he could resolve, at least. It wasn't a problem that was on such a grand scale like saving the world, but it was a first step. Looking up at his reflection, Peter started the process of removing the unevenly grown hair on his face by shaving with smooth strokes of the blade. And with each pass against his skin, it felt like it was doing Peter a world of good, as though he were shedding a burden that had been weighing down on his self-esteem. And when he wiped his face dry with a hand towel, he felt fresh and clean, and looking a bit more alive than he had previously. In fact, he now felt silly for that mental breakdown that he had for a moment there, but he swallowed the feeling down and instead focused on stripping out of the t-shirt and shorts that he wore to bed before changing into his spider suit. He left the bathroom through the opposite door, walking into the sitting room of the suite that housed a desk with a pad of stationary paper and pen. Quickly bending over the paper, Peter wielded the pen and scratched down his new phone number with deliberate slowness, so that he made sure it was legible for Mary Jane to read. Heaven forbid if Mary Jane had an emergency and couldn't call Peter because she couldn't read his handwriting. It may be an irrational fear on his part, but he still couldn't help but worry over the minute details, stressing over them in a way that was more intense than his normal manner. Because nearly losing Mary Jane had affected him so severely it seemed that he hadn't realized that there would be long-term effects that would plague him as well. Perhaps Mary Jane wasn't the only one that needed therapy. Sighing, Peter shook the thought aside and took a deep breath. Then, he plastered a contented smile on his face as he made his way to the door that connected to the suite's bedroom. Mary Jane was sitting just where he had left her in bed, and she beamed at his reappearance with such brightness that his smile suddenly felt a lot more genuine as his entire body softened. In several quick strides, Peter was standing by her side once again as he set the pad of paper down on the bedside table, then, after a thought, he made sure to take the time in pushing the hotel phone closer to the edge of the table as a way of easier access for her to reach. Then an object also on the table caught his eye and Peter took the time to pause and consider once again before he grabbed the TV remote and placed it next to her on the mattress for entertainment while he was away. Feel free to order any movie you want, Peter felt the need to tell her, and if you get hungry, press zero on the phone to order room service. Her gaze roamed over the objects in question, before her eyes lifted to catch onto his. Wow! I've never felt so pampered before in my life. Peter softened at the words. After all that she has been through in the last couple of weeks, he could hardly call a TV remote and room service the pampering that she deserved. And he felt the need to tell her that, so he did. You deserve so much more than this, Red. She rolled her eyes in a teasing way at him for that, but Peter ignored it good-naturedly. Instead, he reluctantly stood, his hands clenching around the spider mask he would soon have to don. I promise, he began, stalling, not wanting to leave her in the slightest. Especially since he knew that he was leaving her to go spend the day with Fury. 
Swallowing Peter continued, you'll barely have time to miss me. Wait, Mary Jane interrupted with a pout marring her plush lips. It was adorable. And may have made Peter a tad bit weak in the knees. You aren't going to leave without kissing me goodbye, are you? A slow smile grew on his lips at that and it took a second for him to respond. Wouldn't dream of it. Leaning forward so that he was bent over her while still standing, Peter pressed a light kiss to her lips. The heat of her closeness was like a hug that was beckoning him closer into its siren embrace. It took a great deal of inner strength for him to pull away, and he did so with the distinct feeling of a flush on his cheeks, especially with catching the look of pure satisfaction on Mary Jane's face as she gazed at him levelly. Her eyes were hooded. Hot. Peter swallowed before he stumbled back a step. Er. I'll see you, then. Uck. Why was he suddenly acting so awkward? But Mary Jane's eyes started to dance at his question and her lips twitched in amusement. You'll know where to find me, tiger, she said in a light, teasing tone, I'll be here. Waiting for my prince charming to bust me out of my tower so that we can explore the real world. Even knowing that she was teasing him, her words sent a spark of desire coursing down to the butterflies bouncing around in his stomach. Because the thought of being Mary Jane's Prince Charming provided such strong feelings of want for it to be a reality. But on the other hand, her words had struck him dumb. Ah. Uh. Yeah, he mumbled out before he swallowed thickly and tried again, as should be easy for me to climb the tower, after all. Spider powers, and all. Mary Jane snickered at his comment, leaving him with a brief sensation of feeling like he was on top of the world. Wouldn't be the first time that I was saved by your sticky fingers. Releasing a surprised huff of a laugh at that, Peter then shook his head with a small contented smile before he lifted his hands up to his face and pulled the mask over his head. Once the fabric was secure, Peter paused before saying, Seriously, MJ, don't feel like you can't call me, alright? Even if it's just to check in with me, I'll be sure to always make time for you. Alright? Melting a bit back against the pillows, Mary Jane nodded. Alright, Tiger. I'll take your word on that. Returning her gesture with a single nod of his own, Peter walked to the balcony doors and opened one of them. Then stalling for a single moment longer with his hand still on the doorknob, Peter turned back to look at her, trying to memorize how she looked in that very moment, before he said, Stay safe, all right? It was with great fondness in her voice and features as she responded, Same goes for you, Peter. Now go be a hero, all right? Nodding once again, Peter finally bit the bullet and took a single step out onto the balcony before leaping high in the air and over the edge to the city beyond, knowing that he couldn't look back otherwise it would be that much more difficult for him to leave as he should. An, this chapter was meant to be longer but it was getting too long and taking me forever to write, so I decided to split it into two parts because you guys have been waiting long enough. Fair warning though, you'll be seeing more of Peter's angst in the coming chapters. To the great advantage of a certain wolf in sheep's clothing. But Peter is only just starting to realize the lasting effects of Endgame, Tony's death, and Mary Jane's abduction on his own psyche, and with that comes rapid mood shifts back and forth as he equally basks in Mary Jane's attention on him and doubting his own self-worth. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter. Please leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts on the chapter. This will probably be the last fluff slash filler chapter for a while as things will start amping up in the plot. And you know what that means, right? It means that I get to throw more cliffhangers at all of you once again. Mwahahaha.